everyone to Zoom into books this evening. We have Dr. Raymond Keller with us tonight to talk about his newest book in the Venus Rising series. So here's Ray Keller. Thank you, Kathy. Good evening, friends of Venus and students of ufology and the paranormal. I'm here this evening to introduce book four in the Venus Rising series of books from Headline Books. It's called The Vast Venus Conspiracy. I've been uh, writing and researching about UFOs since 1967 and um, began to write these Venus books in 2015. Uh, they've gone on to win uh, awards at the uh, London and Southern California uh, book festivals. And I'm sure that you will find them to be both entertaining and enlightening. So without, uh, without further ado, I will go right on to um, book number four, The Vast Venus Conspiracy. Here are the, uh, here are the first uh, three books on the left and at the far right is the, uh, oops, is The Vast Venus Conspiracy. Okay. Um, all right. So um, here we begin. I'm going to do a brief overview of uh, of uh, chapter six in the book, which is entitled "Dominic Lucchesi Meets the Space Girl." I feel it's a good um, cross section of the book because it deals with the uh, peoples and events around the Venus conspiracy and the and the whole flying saucer uh, enigma going back to the time of um, uh, the time of ancient astronauts into the uh, into the present the present day. This chapter focuses on events in the 1950s. This is what the the cover of the book looks like. I really uh, like the artwork there. Um, I've, I've also written extensively about the disappearing uh, UFO experiencers. So you'll see how all these things tie in together when you read The Vast Venus Conspiracy. <clears throat> okay, so the, the, main, uh, the main person in in uh, chapter six is Dominic Lucchesi from Jersey City, New Jersey. He was born there in 1925 and died in Jersey City, New Jersey in 1987. Uh, he was uh, a, one of the lesser known contactees, but a technical consultant to uh, one of the very first UFO groups, the International Flying Saucer Bureau. And uh, uh, Al, uh, Albert K. Bender was the founder of that. He also created the uh, the total um, awareness about the mysterious MIBs or the Men in Black. So Dominic Lucchesi served as a technical consultant since he had a background in electronics and uh, uh, radio and and television repairs. Uh, he was also a pioneer ufologist. Here's a photo from uh, my Venus files depicting him in his early years uh, with the IFSB. The organization was only in existence from 1952 uh, through 1953. Uh, Gray Barker of uh, the Saucerian Press was also a member, uh, as was August C. Roberts who had the most extensive collection of UFO photographs in the world and reports that he shared and cataloged together uh, with um, Otto Binder, a famous science fiction writer and uh, space writer uh, who um, published five books on the UFO enigma. So, uh, Dominic was, he was born in 1925. Uh, he was uh, in his older teens by the time 1938 uh, rolled around, uh, the day that the Martians invaded 
New Jersey. So what you see in the depiction here is a um, is uh, is um, <clears throat> the uh, saucer at Grover's Mill, one of the saucers of the invading uh, Martian fleet. And uh, there's a quotation there that uh, uh, Martians hate Earthlings. They have invaded Earth over and over since the 1890s, but are stopped each time despite their superior weapons and free will. Why? Perhaps because they lack the very things they want so much from Earth, warmth and humanity. So uh, Dominic and Gray Barker, August C. Roberts, uh, these were people who were very familiar uh, with the contactees. And um, <clears throat> they made it uh, uh, a point to uh, uh, delineate all the different types of extraterrestrials that are, are visiting the Earth. And uh, uh, we, know from, uh, we know from UFO research as well as from uh, Paul Hellyer, the former defense minister in Canada, but there's at least 80 groups that are known to be uh, active um, that are, are sending spacecraft to the Earth. And uh, today is an interesting day because uh, the, the newly established Space Force has declared that uh, not only have we been investigating UFOs all along, but uh, the Space Force will have a department specifically dedicated to the study of uh, UFOs or UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, and any possible extraterrestrial connections. The, the, the following slide that we're going to look at is uh, Lady Venus Space Commander uh, by Dominic Lucchesi, as it appeared on the cover of the October 1954 issue of Nexus Magazine, Volume 4, Tome Number 1. So uh, obviously, Dominic Lucchesi is uh, an Italian heritage, and um, uh, he, his ancestors came from Sicily, so you see Mount Etna there in the, in the background, uh, Lady Venus, and the connection with the flying saucers with the Venusian scout craft that he drew over here in the upper uh, upper left left hand corner. So uh, according to Dominic uh, in the article in this particular issue, uh, which was out way before uh, Eric von Daniken, that uh, the flying saucers and the Venusians had an important part to play in the establishment of the Roman Empire. Going back to uh, the account uh, uh, in Virgil's Aeneid about the um, uh, intervention of, of Lady Venus here on Earth uh, to guide her son uh, and a band of, uh, of warriors that were seeking to establish a new home following the fall of Troy. They were soldiers. Um, in defending Troy, and they uh, they made their way to the Italian peninsula to where Rome is, and they established the city there. They were guided by by uh, uh, Aeneas' uh, mother, Lady Venus, the the whole way. Now, Lucchesi was a frequent guest on Long John Nebel's Hardy Line radio broadcast. That was over WOR in New York, 1710 on the AM dial. Uh, it was every night uh, in the wee hours of the morning, just like uh, George Nouri today uh, with the coast to coast uh, AM broadcast. And uh, the topic of most every broadcast was UFOs, uh, contactees, and paranormal phenomena of all, uh, of all sorts. And uh, our friend Dominic was also a frequent guest um, on the program, talking about his own contacts, as well as other uh, UFO cases, uh, including landings and contacts that he had personally investigated. So this was over mutual um, broadcasting companies uh, a transmitter. 
and the signal could be reached in 25 states. So remember, this was before satellites, uh, so it was uh, the most powerful transmitter uh, in, the, in the country at that time. Um, Long John's ne Neville's program, it, it continued uh, into the mid-60s, and um, um, Dominic Lucchesi never quit uh, investigating UFOs and talking about his cases and so forth. Uh, myself and my good friend um, Michael Rich went out to see Dominic Lucchesi do a program, a presentation on his own his own experience as, as a contactee in September of 1969 at the uh, Times Square in New York and uh, uh, in a hotel there, a motel there. And um, it was a kind of a mini UFO uh, convention. And um, it was, uh, Mike was representing uh, WZAK Radio, where he was uh, hosting a program about paranormal uh, phenomena, uh, kind of emulating Long John Neville's uh, program. And I was there as a reporter from the Bedford Times Register, and also as the editor of the Flying Saucer Report, which had been in publication already for, for two years at uh, that particular time. And I did have a 1967 GTO Tempest Convertible Sky Blue um, that we drove up there in. <clears throat> um, this is the beginnings of the, of the Flying Saucer Report. And um, this is also in 1969 uh, from the National Enquirer. This is from the Gray Barker Collection. And uh, myself on the left, Raymond Keller on the right, Alan T. Weston as the, as the young editors uh, of the publication. So two years, um, two years after the foundation of the Flying Saucer Report, uh, we were on our way to interview many prominent people in the UFO field, including the, uh, the Apollo 8 astronauts, uh, Major Hector Quintanilla Jr. of uh, Project, Director of Project Blue Book. Uh, we had met with um, uh, Gray Barker, with, uh, um, with uh, Jean Duplantier in Canada of Saucer Space and Science, so for for two teenagers, we were really, we were really getting around. Uh, this is my friend Michael Larich, as he uh, uh, appeared back in that in that time. And uh, I have to thank Mike for his help with uh, putting together both Venus Four and Venus Five. Uh, there's a lot of information uh, from Mike's files going way back that are included. Uh, in these books that uh, some people have never even heard about uh, before, and it's all documented with uh, photographs and evidence. So um, check it out on uh, on Amazon. There's only a limited uh, uh, run on the first edition. So uh, you know, please contact uh, uh, Headline Books directly, headlinebooks.com, or go uh, directly to uh, um, to Amazon so that you can uh, uh, get some copies. The next slide that will be coming up is the first generation ufologist, Jim Mosley. Uh, he was so impressed with Jack and Irene Forster's close encounter that he used Dominic Lucchesi's drawing of the Space Girl to illustrate the cover of the December 1954 issue of the Innovative Nexus magazine which was a precursor to Saucer News. There is a new Nexus magazine about UFOs and paranormal phenomena coming out of Australia, but it doesn't have any connection uh, to, these early, um, to these early pioneers. But one of the cases that Dominic Lucchesi investigated in his own backyard was that of uh, Jack and Irene Forster. Um, they had, they had um, seen a, a, a light come down um, on a remote uh, Jersey highway and um, 
they parked the, the car and uh, I, Irene stayed behind because she was uh, uh, a bit a bit frightened but Jack went up to the the object and uh, uh, Dominic Lucchesi being the great sketch artist that he was based uh, this drawing on the space pilot who identified herself as Commander Aura Reigns as uh, looking uh, like this is stepping out of the, the, the door to the saucer. <clears throat> um, as we know, um, Dominic was a big uh, ham radio aficionado. And on the left is a copy of his QSL card, uh, his uh, radio, radio identification card. Um, and uh, as people would pick up his signal, they would write to him and then he would send them his card. And if you look closely at it, uh, you can see that it's on the surface of, uh, that it is on the surface of the moon, um, representative of the moon base Clarion, which he discovered about. And then there's different kinds of ships, like a cigar shaped ship and some, uh, some extraterrestrial entities, a satellite, um, very, very innovative uh, design for back in 19, in the, uh, the mid 1950s. Then uh, he was given instructions to build a communications device where he could, uh, which he would be used to activate um, with a signal watch. Uh, with a with a wristwatch, and um, he could summon the the uh, extraterrestrials uh, to come and uh, communicate with him, uh, either on the radio or or in person, with uh, additional information about their mission here on Earth and and the flying saucers generally. Uh, one of the readers of um, of my columns that I publish in uh, uh, phantomsandmonsters.com, thepromisedrevealed.com, unarianwisdom.com, and many other uh, sites, uh, read what I had to say about Dominic Lucchesi and uh, did, this, did this beautiful drawing here. Um, on, the, on the left is uh, the Queen of Venus, it's uh, the mysterious woman known as uh, as Lady Orda, and or um, Dolores Barrio sometimes, and different names when she's on the Earth. And then on the right is uh, Commander Aura Reigns. She's uh, the commander of a base called Clarion on the far side of the Moon, the side of the Moon that we can't see uh, here here from Earth. <clears throat> Now, I thought it was very interesting about uh, people communicating by ham radio or, or by radio or other electronic means with, uh, uh, with UFO occupants. And we see that perhaps Dominic Lucchesi's story may have been the, the basis for the very first episode of The Outer Limits, which broadcast on the 16th of September, 1963. This featured a galaxy being who is totally electromagnetic uh, in composition and was accidentally brought down to Earth uh, from the Andromeda star cluster uh, when a, a radio engineer uh, misused the commercial station in California uh, to do some experiments in, in trying to invent a three-dimensional television set. So he, he intercepted these beings and they just walked right, uh, right through. It's an, an amazing episode. But uh, all the radio communications that um, Dominic had with uh, Aura Reigns and other, other ETs are all explored in this par particular chapter. Um, if you um, check out these frequencies. You can actually hear what Venus sounds like. 
It's the only planet that, that registers uh, two resonant frequencies. Uh, these are 221.23 hertz and 409.1 hertz. And uh, I provided a, uh, a YouTube link here. Uh, you could tune in and meditate. It's, uh, uh, it's a very uh, uh, eerie and esoteric sound. And um, I think this runs for like 12 hours that you could listen to actual sounds uh, being uh, uh, emitted from, from Venus. It almost sounds like uh, lovely lady Venus is singing a song. Uh, this is Dominic's sketch of his space commander, Aura Reigns. Uh, he sketched his own version of Aura Reigns based on his personal encounter with her, along with the other descriptions provided by a California contactee named Truman Betherum. Truman was a road worker, construction crew chief out at the Mormon Mesa in Nevada, and uh, where he encountered uh, Aura Reigns um, in her uh, Venusian observation pat uh, patrol craft, and uh, he had he had many other encounters with her as well, and and even wrote a book about it, uh, of which all the details are in uh, my first book, um, titled um, Venus Rising: A Concise History of the of, of the Second Planet. Okay, and um, here's some rare photos of Commander Aura Reigns herself at an interplanetary spacecraft convention at Landers Field in California on the 12th of November of, 19, uh, of 1957. Uh, Jules uh, B. St. Germain was a New York attorney who was very fascinated with flying saucers, and he attended all of um, as long as he was alive and um, George Van Tassel was alive, between 1954 and 1978, uh, they held these big um, UFO jamborees, uh, interplanetary spacecraft conventions out at Landers Field at, at the Giant Rock Airport, uh, about um, 17 miles northeast of Yucca Valley. In, uh, in California. And um, uh, you'll find a lot of, uh, of uh, new and exciting information of, about these conventions never before revealed. And uh, this is the set of uh, photos taken by this New York attorney of, um, of Commander Aura Rains. Or, uh, she identified herself as being Aura Rains. And uh, her day job uh, here on Earth was that of a science fiction writer. She went by the name of Evelyn Smith uh, from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana area. Um, this is a, a collection of some of her works and uh, one in particular uh, that caught my attention was the Venus Trap. And so I have some interesting quotes from, from her uh, in chapter six of my book. Uh, so doing her part to raise feminist consciousness, Evelyn Smith, uh, otherwise known as Captain Aura Reigns, the commander of the Spartacus, a Venusian observation patrol craft deployed from the far side of the moon, posed for the artist Ed Emschwiller of the magazine of fantasy and science fiction in the October 1953 issue. Uh, she also wrote uh, as a pioneer science fiction writer ma many stories herself. And uh, well, this particular story was very interesting. Um, you can see the cover here um, because uh, it depicts um, it depicts. Uh, um, this revolutionary female character um, controlling a stargate or an interdimensional rift, and we see gentlemen uh, uh, walking right right through it, taking a, a quantum step through both time and space. 
or shall I say beyond time and space? Uh, Dr. George Hunt Williamson was another um, frequent attendee at the, at the Interplanetary Spacecraft Conventions. He was also um, a neighbor of uh, Evelyn Smith in Noblesville, um, Indiana, outside Indianapolis. And uh, in his book, Other Tongues, Other Flesh, published in 1951, um, he actually interviews uh, Evelyn about uh, UFOs and recognizes that she's an extraordinary woman with uh, amazing psychic powers and that it's no wonder that she was chosen for um, contact and um, uh, enlistment into the angel forces of the Venusian extraterrestrials. Uh, this is a sketch by Dr. George Hunt Williamson of Orthon's Footprints. This is the Venusian entity that George Adamski met out in the desert on the 20th of November, 1952. Um, uh, Dr. Williamson watched the whole thing along with uh, five other witnesses from a distance with binoculars as Adamski talked to Orthon. And then after Orthon left in his, uh, in his Venusian scout ship, he went over there and made these plaster casts, plaster of Paris casts of the, uh, of the footprints. And then um, he sent these to Mr. Peter Kaur, who still lives today in the greater Cleveland area. He was at the time, back in the, back in the mid 1950s, a scientist at the Livermore Labs in California, an atomic scientist, uh, as well as a technical consultant for uh, Raymond Palmer and his science fiction and UFO magazines. And um, uh, one of the, the true experts on UFOs, his whole house is a big UFO library. That's me standing next to, to, to Peter Kaur. And the photograph was taken of us together by Michael Larich on the 17th of June, 2018. And uh, I went there specifically to ask him about, uh, uh, about the um, footprints of, of Ortho. So here we see, um, this is a letter, letterhead from the Talonic Research Center of Prescott, Arizona, of which Dr. Jo George Hunt Williamson, the astroarchaeologist, was the chairman of the board. And uh, this is our friend's address in Cleveland, the Cleveland area. And then in the letter, uh, which was to Gray Barker of the Saucerian Press, who inquired back in the day on December, uh, in December of 1956 about the footprints. And uh, here he says that they're a size six shoe, very small, like a small slipper. And that the markings and the plaster Paris were indistinct, that it probably was a small girl's slipper. So uh, John A. Keel, uh, another famous uh, paranormal and uh, flying saucer investigator, uh, John A. Keel edited the Anomaly newsletter and wrote countless articles and numerous books about our mysterious universe that he referred to as the super spectrum. So he was one of the one of those uh, um, advanced thinkers that looked um, outside the box for explanations to UFOs and UFO phenomena, exploring. Uh, 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 magic, the occult, uh, interdimensional travel, um, uh, cryptid phenomena, and finding links and association between all kinds of paranormal phenomena uh, coinciding with uh, intense increases in UFO activity in certain areas. This is, uh, this is from the, uh, the title page of um, the Anomaly Newsletter. This is back in April 1974. 
published irregularly by Specialized Research, uh, Murray Hill Station in New York by John A. By John a. Keel. Only now have uh, Dr. J. Allen, uh, J. J. Allen Hynek finally came around, uh, Dr. Jacques Belay and others about the interdimensional aspects as well as the interplanetary aspects of, uh, of, our, of our visitors from outer, outer space and from, from regions beyond that we can only now just sort of guess about. So John A. Keel became interested in the paranormal following the, the Richard Shaver case. And this all ties into Dominic Lucchesi because um, um, this is one of the first cases where I could find where the, um, uh, the intelligences uh, from, from space or from lost civilizations, other dimensions, the inner earth, when these beings began to use uh, our, our own electronic devices and appliances to speak to us and send mess messages. And in, uh, as far as the Darrow go, a civilization deep under the earth, uh, the inner world called Agartha, they utilized his welding equipment. Uh, Shaver lived in Southwest Pennsylvania and they, they sent him a transmission, began to send advanced knowledge um, directly into his brain from the welding equipment. It's a very strange story. But uh, he also did one, another story called Gods of Venus, where he explained that uh, the civilizations in the inner world and the lost continent of Lemuria were established by Venusians. Uh, literally aeons ago, and a very, very fascinating, very fascinating book. I also have more about, about Richard Shaver and all my other Venus books. Uh, Lady Columba, uh, another uh, Venusian emissary uh, who wrote about Venusians on the moon and inside the moon and on the backside of the moon, uh, having visited there, uh, she revealed the influence of Venus on the establishment of inner earth civilizations. And a lot of that information from Lady Columba will appear in book number five, Lady Columba Venus Revelations, which is scheduled to come out very soon. This is uh, Aura Rains visiting uh, our friend Rob Potter of the promiserevealed.com, uh, the sponsor of the, um, the sponsor of the uh, Meet the Venusians conference uh, at the end of this month in, in Mount Shasta. Um, this is an appearance. There were some other v Venusians there as well, but uh, uh, only um, Commander Aura Rains uh, allowed this picture to be taken with, uh, with Rob Potter at that time. This is in the Cheat Lake the Cheat Lake Library of all places in West Virginia, right here in wild and wonderful West Virginia. Okay, then uh, another chapter in my book is uh, uh, more on Garden State or New Jersey contactees. I specifically look at the activities of the North Jersey UFO group and UFO activity and contactees up and down uh, the Garden State, as well as in uh, neighboring states along the, the East Coast. Um, but uh, I'm just doing this as a, a, a preview for Chapter 6. Um, but there's so much more. There's nine chapters altogether um, in the vast uh, Venus conspiracy. So thank you very much for your uh, time and attention. Thank you, Raymond. Um, would you like to tell us some more about the Mount Shasta event? Oh, yes. Um, it's sponsored by Rob Potter, who is very famous in uh, psychic and paranormal UFO circles. Uh, Rob has been on many programs, coast to coast, uh, um, been to many conventions around the, uh, around the world. Um, 
he uh, is a contact with the Venusians himself. And uh, the, the conference uh, brings together experts on the planet Venus from, from all over the world and beyond, I should say. And uh, it will be held at the Siskiyou Masonic Lodge. And uh, that will be on, the, uh, on Adler Street in downtown Mount Shasta, which is right off of Route uh, Interstate 5 up by the Oregon border. It's a very beautiful area, lots of uh, pristine lakes and wilderness. Uh, be a lot of outdoor activities there, sky watches, uh, meditation circles, and, and uh, so forth. The 26th through the 30th of August this month. And uh, for further information, contact uh, on the web. Just go to thepromiserevealed.com. And then uh, I have a question here uh, in the chat. Has anyone landed a probe on Venus? Yes, the Russians have succeeded in landing several probes on, on Venus. And uh, this information is covered in great detail in uh, uh, the vast Venus conspiracy, what the Russians really found out, and uh, also uh, vindication for life on Venus as far as the space probes from other countries here on Earth that are sent to Venus. Uh, Japan with the Akatsuki probe, the United States with the Mariner and Magellan probes, uh, and the European Union with its Venus Express. Do you think the government will be more forthcoming about UFOs? Oh yes, I believe that uh, the, the uh, revelations that are coming are, are fast and furious. Uh, this is the perfect time to undertake uh, disclosures since we're preoccupied with uh, so much domestic turmoil, uh, with it, an, an economic crisis, uh, with the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, the higher-ups and the, the, the powers that be, they certainly have uh, bigger, fish, uh, bigger fish to fry. And uh, uh, of course, I believe one of the reasons that we have a space force is because um, our government and other governments of the world are certainly interested about any potential threats uh, from outer space, although I, I don't uh, uh, believe that uh, while the Venusians pose a threat, there are other extraterrestrial civilizations out there who are visiting Earth, uh, i.e. just look at all of the vi different kinds of uh, occupant reports that come along with the sightings of, of flying saucers and, uh, and landings of of uh, alien spacecraft. Uh, so the, the universe is a very big place. I know that there are um, an estimated uh, 250 billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy alone, and uh, yet there are billions upon billions of galaxies uh, in the, uh, just in our, in our universe alone, let alone the omniverse or or, or other dimensions. And we also know from the Kepler probe that, uh, that uh, uh, we've cataloged at least uh, 5,000 other, uh, other systems in the Milky Way, in our local arm of the Milky Way galaxy that have planets, many of them Earth-like, uh, with Earth-like uh, conditions. So I, I'm assuming that not all of them are wearing white hats, that, we, that there's got to be some bad guys in the bunch as well. Uh, what sparked your interest in UFOs? My interest in UFOs actually began with a sighting of a, uh, of a flying saucer uh, hovering about a thousand feet over a railroad trestle. Uh, back in 1960, in the mid-1960s, I was coming back with a, a scout troop uh, from, from camping out at an area called Tinker's Creek. 
down in, in uh, Walton Hills, Ohio. Well, uh, thank you very much, my friends. It's always a, a, a pleasure. Thank you, Kathy, for this wonderful opportunity. I hope that uh, all of you have enjoyed this preview of uh, Venus Rising, book number four in the series, The Vast Venus Conspiracy. And keep looking up. <laughs>